Hi, George here with an easy technique to remove type off of a picture. In this case, I have two examples here. These are both vintage travel posters. One on the left-hand side here, we have some text and a couple of logos on top of an actual image with different image elements underneath of that. So it has texture underneath. Right-hand side, we have two different kinds of things in here, text on a solid background and text on a picture like we have over here. So this area here, where it says the demo of the tropics, is the same as the area right down here at the bottom of the other picture. So close that one down. We'll do our fixes on this one. And whenever I do this kind of a project, I always make a duplicate of the background, right click and duplicate. That gives me a safety just in case something goes wrong. I can always go back to that background and make another copy of it. Zoom up here to this top. And we'll start off with the area up here. Now this is an easy one to fix, but if you look at this carefully, this isn't an even blue in here. It's a bit darker along here. It's a bit lighter through the middle, a bit darker down through here. So it's not an exact even blue. And also there is some texture in there as well. So I can't just paint that in with blue. It wouldn't have the texture. So the idea here is to use clone stamping. And we can try different approaches to that. Of course, I could just come in here and paint this in and hope for the best or try to put in some texture afterwards. But that's kind of hit and miss. I want to have a good clean fix on this. We'll first go here to the clone stamp tool and we'll bring this up. There we go. I'm going to clone stamp from over here. And with the clone step, you hold the Alt key down and click on where you want to copy from and then move over to where you want to copy to. Just kind of paint in like that. Notice I'm getting some lines in here from this. I was too large on my brush size. Let's just back up on that. Bring my brush size down. That's the left square bracket key. This will stay away from that section, hopefully. And the same thing, hold the Alt key down and click. And you can then paint in here like this. And notice I'm painting left to right. My paint to spot is just directly to the left of my paint from spot. And that's what you want to do when you have this kind of an area where you have these gradients happening. It's real subtle, but it's darker here and lighter in the middle. That way I'm always painting from the dark to the dark and from the lighter to the lighter. At some point you'll go off your edge like that. So you just come over here, other side, alt and click and then paint in from this side. Same exact concept. And this should give you a really good job. Normally I'll come from both sides like that. So I'll just work in towards the middle and that will usually take care of any kind of little odd thing happening. Just kind of work back and forth and you should be okay. It's a little bit of a time consuming process and you have to be really careful in areas like this. I may have to go over here and bring it in from this side just because that A is getting very close in there. So it may take some careful choices of position in here to get this perfectly done. And you might want to come in here and actually kind of follow the shape a little bit like this on some spots. But as much as possible, try to work directly left to right when you're doing this to get the best quality. Also, don't go over the area too many times. I'm doing it quite a few as I have to, but try not to go over it too many times because every time you're painting in like this with the clone stamp tool, there's always a possibility that you might be losing some of your texture, it might be smoothing out. But I think that looks pretty good. That's a good fix. The second way, which is sometimes easier, doesn't always work, but it's the same technique we'll be using down over here with this text. I'll just use the magic wand and I'll click into the letter. And notice that doesn't go clear to the edges. That's okay. Go up here to select, come down to modify and expand. Let's try five pixels. It takes it out just a little ways like that. You want it just a little ways away from your image. And then go up here to edit and come down to fill selection. And you want this at content aware. Mode is normal. Opacity is 100%. Choose OK. And that should do a pretty good job. Now, it grabbed a little bit of something over here. That oftentimes happens. Control D to deselect. Everything else looks fine. Then we can go back and fix this one with our clone stamp tool. Let's go way over here somewhere. Alt and click. And then just paint that in and clean that out. I think it may take a couple of passes to get it perfect. And there we go. So pretty easy, as you can see. Let's come down here, a little different case. And here we have a much more complex background. And it's also an outline around the letters, but it's the same basic concept. And I'd recommend working from your outside letters and going in towards the middle. Don't start in here someplace. That way there's more stuff out here for Photoshop elements to work with. Let's zoom in a bit. There we go and click into the T, add a bit more in here. That's pretty good. 
be a little bit more right there. And the same thing, go up to select, come down to modify and expand. Let's see if five pixels is enough. We want to get past that outline, and it is. That got clear past the outline. And let's see if this can be filled. Edit, fill selection, and there we go. Control D to deselect, and that cleaned it out real nice. Now you also can do the clone stamping. It's just a bit more difficult at times with the real complex backgrounds. So I usually try to use the content aware fill if I'm on a complex background. And then it's just a matter of going through and doing each letter at a time. Again, doing the outside letters first. Same trick, modify, expand. There we go. And then edit, fill selection, and there it is, control D to deselect. Let's see how this looks just using the clone stamp tool. Come way out here someplace, alt and click. And let's paint in. We should be okay on this as well. The thing to watch out for if you're clone stamping is areas like this where it's lighter color in here and it's darker over here, but it's lighter over here. You want to keep that difference happening in there. So over here, I might come down here, grab a part from here and bring it up into here. Just kind of match the texture that's in the area that you're clone stamping to. One of the reasons why I like using the Content Aware Fill on these kinds of areas is that it also looks for that stuff and does a very good job at that. But being a little bit careful, you can come in here and do a pretty good job with just the Clone Stamp tool as well. And that looks perfect in there. Okay, let me just switch over and show you this with all of the text removed and we'll see how it looks. And there we go, there's our finished poster with all of the text removed. It can now be used for something else, you know, picture on the wall, whatever you like, and fairly easy to do as long as you take your time and try to be careful on where you're matching from and to and using the content where it fails as much as possible. If you want a really good reference tool to use along with Photoshop Elements, maybe you've used Elements for a while and you know all the basics, but you want to learn a lot of specifics or you have questions as you go, I have a great tool just for that. It's called my HTG Photo Coach, and I have step-by-step -step instructions on everything inside of Photoshop Elements, plus I'm adding in more stuff every single month. And you can find out more about that at the link at the top of the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit that bell icon so you get notifications of my new videos as they go up. I'm doing new videos all the time and I'll see you next time.